Hey guys, I am so excited to get to be the one that, wow, follows up Miguel Carrasco, really? Honestly, I was the only one brave enough to do it, not gonna lie. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so I'm really excited because um, I've been talking to these leaders about what we wanted to cover on this income surge. And we really, I think, found a really cool balance of the how-to, you know, like the teacher type style stuff, showing you exactly what you need to do to be successful, how it breaks down in Beachbody. Um, you know, like taking all the weird terms that we have in Beachbody and making it to where it's like anybody can understand. Because I know that for me, in the beginning of my journey as a coach, I was it was way over my head and I was just doing out of doing, not understanding how I was doing it or why I was doing it or if it was working or not. And the cool thing is you guys get to learn from all of our mistakes <laughs> because we've made plenty along the way. There were plenty of times that we missed a huge bonus because we didn't realize there was a certain qualification for um, personal volume you had to have or we've you know, seen ourselves make mistakes with focusing on the wrong goals to actually grow your business. And so what we want you to do is get to learn from all of our mistakes. And we also want you to learn from our successes, the things that worked. And so the way that I want to start things off is to talk about the foundation of success. And I want to start it off by sharing a little bit about my journey. And a lot of you guys know my story. And sometimes I feel so many, I've told my story so many times that I rush through it really quickly um, and feel like, oh, you know, nobody wants to hear this again. I've heard it a million times, but I know that there are 3,000, like 500, maybe more than that now, coaches in this group, which is insane um, to even think that there's that many people that would want to know about this stuff, which is pretty cool. So I want to give you a little bit of background. And I think sometimes it's hard to imagine some of these coaches when they started. Um, I've had the fortune of getting to see pretty much all of them from the get-go. And I guess that probably built a lot of my belief. And I think sometimes, you know, when you hear all the crazy accolades and things that people have done, it's like hard to imagine they ever felt like you. You know, like that you guys that are nervous, that are scared, that you don't understand this, and how are you possibly ever gonna, can, you know, talk someone into doing this with you when you're just brand new. And I want you to understand like all of us have been brand new. All of us have been where you are at ground zero with zero commission, zero sales, zero experience, you know, at one point or another. We all start at different points in our journey. Um, so for me personally, I printed out some pictures because I'm a slide person, but you can't do slides on live. So I'm going to show you some pictures and I will post them in the group afterwards as well so that you can go through them. I'm very visual, so I need to be able to look at things for me to really take it in. So hopefully this will help. But I printed out this picture of this, this dead tree. And you can't see it, if I put it really close, maybe you can, but I have some words on that tree. And what this tree represents is my starting place. This is my family tree, okay? And I'm not going to go through every part of my story, I could write a biography, but I come from two alcoholic parents. I come from a place where I filed bankruptcy at 25 years old after having my first daughter. Um, I'm a high school dropout. I literally have education, up, like formal education, up till 10th grade, like midway through 10th grade. Um, I've dealt with losing my brother to brain cancer. Uh, I really raised myself. I didn't have um, parents. They wouldn't know whether or not I was home or not. Nobody cared to check in. Nobody um, was there to push me in any type of way. I had no upline. So when I came into Beachbody, I actually had done P90X and failed. Um, it was my fourth time that I finally succeeded and I failed back to back to back times. I'm trying to get back in shape after having my daughter, London. And I guess the, the reason why I failed is I kept thinking, I kept beating myself up. I kept saying, I cannot keep up with these people in the video. It's too hard. Like I suck. And I would constantly aff affirm myself in a negative way. And lo and behold, surprise, surprise, when I was confirming myself, affirming myself in those negative tenses, I would get discouraged and eventually give up. And it was the fourth time that I decided to do things a little bit differently that I decided I'm just going to accept that I am where I am and I'm just going to beat my own personal best. So if I can only do five minutes of the, D of the DVD, I'm going to pat myself on the back for the fact that I did five minutes. That's more than zero minutes, right? And then the next time I do that DVD, I'm going to try to make it to six or seven minutes. And the next time I'm going to try to do seven or eight. And then I'm going to keep pushing myself little by little and breaking my own personal record. And by doing that, I started to celebrate the small wins rather than comparing the fact that I didn't complete it. 
Um, I don't know about you guys, but I had this thing since I was a probably ninth or 10th grade when I realized how like crazy my family was where I wanted to become perfect. I wanted, I was with the same guy for the, from the time I was 15 to 22. I wanted, he was the first guy I ever kissed, everything. And I thought I'm going to have like the high school boyfriend that I fall in love with. We're going to be married. And then I'm going to have like an amazing house and I'm going to be super successful. I was determined to not end up like my parents. And so I became like a perfectionist in everything that I did. And so that screwed me over. For those of you who are perfectionists, you'll avoid doing things unless you know for sure that you can succeed in them. So you hold yourself back from ever trying anything scary. This girl's been there. So when I decided to, to break that and stop comparing myself and just compete with myself little by little, and the days that I miss, because trust me, I missed days in my time when I was successful with P90X, I just shook it off and said, all right, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep pushing forward. And some results better than perfect, you know, than no results. If I turn back around, if I go back to where I was, I'm starting from zero again. I'm going to be in the exact place being frustrated. So keep moving forward. And that's what I did. And eventually I succeeded with the program. I ended up posting um, throughout my 30, my 90 days. I ended up posting videos on YouTube. I wasn't a coach and people started to write me. And at the time I was a bartender and it, all, it was all I had ever done was a uh, hospitality business. And that's all I knew. But I would start to get these messages from women saying, you know, I decided to buy P90X because of you. And your results really inspired me because you're a mom like me and your starting body was the same as mine. And what did you do? How did you, how did you stick with the program when you have a toddler? Or how did you do the nutrition plan? Which one did you follow? It? And I would write these ladies back and I loved it because I was like, for the first time in my life, I felt I had inspired someone to do something positive in their life. You know, I had alcoholic parents always trying to change them. That didn't work out can't change people that don't want to be changed. I was a bartender, so I'm not helping anybody there. And then I have these people saying like, I encourage them by me. I didn't do anything on the video. All I did was share my results, but I had inspired them to start making positive changes in their life. And I started, something started to click there. Like, Hmm, for the first time in my life, I am putting myself first. I'm putting myself in the picture. I'm not focusing all my efforts on changing other people. I'm focused on changing myself. And all of a sudden, it's actually making a difference and it's inspiring other people to start to work on themselves, people that are ready to change. And I remember telling my husband, like, if I could do that for a living, I would absolutely love it. It would be my dream job. And he was like, why don't you go be a personal trainer? And I was like, well, I'm not obsessed with the fitness part of it. I'm obsessed with the communication and changing people's lives and making them believe in themselves and sharing a vision with them and, and working on my own self. And last thing I wanted to do is be stuck in like a smelly gym all day long. That did not sound fun. And so down the road, I'm not going to share the whole thing, but down the road, he asked me if, you know, he's like, you should call Beachbody and see if they have some sort of like affiliate program or something. So after him saying that a few times and one day getting a message or like three, four messages in a row, I was like, okay, I'm going to call this company. And I did. And lo and behold, I found out about coaching. I also, because I signed up over the phones, didn't choose the person I'm working with. So I got randomly placed under somebody. This person, I contact them. I'm so excited. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be awesome at this. I contact them and they're like, never responded. And then I contacted them again. And they're like, yeah, I don't really do the beach body thing. Um, but that's awesome that you're going to do so great with it. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't understand that it was network marketing. And honestly, this is honest to God truth. If I would have known it was any form of network marketing when I signed up on that phone call, I, there's no way I would have signed up because I had the ickiest taste in my mouth because of being a bartender and constantly pitched on network marketing companies and all the skeeziness that it felt like. Um, I basically looked at network marketing as this person's trying to sell me on this company, sign me up for $250, $500. They're going to get half of it and they're going to like leave me there hanging. I'm going to have a bunch of product at my house. And honestly, that might be how some network marketing companies work. But I was tricked into Beachbody by, I feel, God. And lo and behold, realized, wow, I naturally got into this. I know the programs work. I know that I love inspiring other people. I know that those people stuck with their journey and they inspired other people because that's exactly how it works. It trickles down. Why wouldn't I share this with people? So when I realized about the network marketing side and I realized I didn't have an active upline, my immediate response was to be a victim. And because that's what I had done my whole life. I always looked at other people and my life circumstances and I blamed people and I said, well, you know, if I would have had more 
um, parenting, if I would have had somebody that could have supported me financially, if I could have had people that were my encouragers and, and really like took my dreams and helped me to reach those dreams, then I would be more successful. Or if I didn't have this happen to me and have a premature baby and end up in all this debt, then I wouldn't have to be filing for bankruptcy and starting all over again. If I would have had an upline that would have helped me in this business, then I would have been successful. And that was my immediate response. And then what happened is I looked at this little girl right here. And as you see in this picture, that little girl is in my shoes. And the last thing I wanted for her in that moment was to follow in my footsteps, to have my life circumstances, my life's choices be her circumstances and eventually her choices because she wasn't going to do as I say, she was going to do as I do. And so when I looked at that little girl and I wanted to make my excuses and I wanted to be all upset that I would have to cancel for six months to be able to sign up under somebody else, I decided no mas, drawing a line in the sand. I know this didn't happen by accident, that somehow I end up in this business what I know I wouldn't normally do, and it's, it makes absolutely no sense, but I knew it was there for a purpose, and I knew I believed in the products, and I knew that if I focused on helping myself, if I became the kind of coach I wished I would have had, if I took the brunt of the work, worked my butt off, figured things out, I could pay forward to my team and to my daughter a better life, a better way of doing things. And so I decided, all right. Here we go. Just like my P90X journey, I'm drawing a line and I'm just going to beat my own personal best every single day. I'm going to push forward. So that's the beginning. That was July 13th, 2010. So almost six and a half years ago. And the other day I got a message from a guy named Craig Holiday who I used to listen to when I was first a Beachbody coach. And he said, do you remember this message that you sent to me at the beginning of your Beachbody career? I was just on this call for another team and I was, I brought it up and I went back and read it and I was just totally blown away. And so I went and read this note and I'm going to read it to you guys. This is a message I sent to him. I was a month and four days into the business and remember, had no offline, had no idea what I was doing, had no idea what you could do with Beachbody. I, I didn't have anybody to show me what was possible income wise. I just hoped I made a couple extra hundred bucks and I was in a tight spot. Um, for those of you who don't know, right in that moment, my house was up for foreclosure. The house that I bought at 20 thinking I was going to be super successful ended up being at the crash of the market bought and ended up having a daughter that was two months premature and all kinds of medical debt, $400,000 to be exact. So I'm writing this completely broke. No idea if this is going to work or not. You know, financially, I have no idea what it's capable of. No upline to tell me what it's capable of. But I had drawn a line in the sand and I had created a vision in my mind of where I was taking this and that was to the top and that nothing was going to stop me. I didn't know how long it was going to take me, but in my head I said, no, I'm going all the way and nothing was going to take, nothing was going to stop me. It says, you don't know me, but I have an overwhelming feeling that we will be a big part of each other's life sometime soon. You see, I'm on God's path now and all of a sudden I've got, I have a sixth sense. I listened to your week one call on the 90 days to excellence yesterday for the very first time. And in just a few minutes of hearing you speak, I felt compelled to write you. I've always had the DNA you speak of. It's a determined natural ambition, by the way. And though I too come from a family of alcoholics and average naysayers, my dream never fully diminished. I knew one day my calling to be a positive influence on millions of people would come and I would fly as if I always had. It would be natural for me because for a dreamer, average is what comes unnaturally. Average for me is forced, painful, and aches my bones. For about a year, I had lost touch with my dream and was forcing reality down my throat when all of a sudden I made a decision to give everything in my life to God, really give it to him, and let him have his way with it. Since then, I quit my job, became an active coach, and in 28 days, became a diamond coach with a thriving team of people sent to me in the strangest of ways. We're coming to Chicago on the 25th and are all looking forward to hearing you speak live. I hope this message doesn't sound too crazy. I just felt directed to write and thank you for inspiring my heart to dream bigger dreams. I look forward to meeting you. All my respect and admiration, Lindsay Matway. Okay, 
that is belief. Like I read that the other day and we were at breakfast with my husband sitting across from him knowing that we just had our second baby. We don't have to ever worry about finances. We're both home with her. We get to experience every single moment. He didn't get to do that with our first. He was working seven days a week. And I sat across from him and I cried because that girl had no reason to believe she would ever become who she has become. But she became who she has become because she believed, right? Because she was like drawing a line in the sand, never going back. She was not going to give up for that little girl. And she hustled her ass off. And she did it. And no, there were many bumps in the road and it was hard. Do you know what I made that week? I just went back and I looked it up, guys. And I will send you a screenshot if you don't believe it. The day I sent that, the next day, my paycheck for the amount of hours I was putting in, which who knows how much, I mean, probably a hundred because I was, had quit my job and my husband had an ultimatum over my head that I had to go back to bartending in three months if I didn't make $600 a week, which by the way, I didn't do that goal. Uh, that week, you can't see this, it's going to be backwards. I made $85.19. That week, the girl who wrote that note with so much fierce determination made $85.19, working probably 120 hours. So many people would look at the paycheck, and that is the work that they would put on their business. That is the time that they would put in. They'd say, oh, I'm making $85. I'm only going to put in a few hours. No. I put in the time knowing that that was the only freaking investment I had to make. I didn't have money to invest in this. I couldn't have bought ads. Ads weren't around back then, but I couldn't have bought ads to build my business. I had no freaking money. All I had was time, and I didn't even have time. I just made time. I figured out a way, and I went all in. $85.19, $44.95 of that was commission, $19.44 was club membership. By the way, club membership back then was a freaking joke. There was no Beachbody on Demand and cool cooking show and all these amazing perks. No, it was like, I don't even know what it was. I never went into it. I don't even know how people bought it. $18 of it was team bonus cycle. That means I met, I met one team bonus cycle that week. One. That means one of my coaches, made a, I made $1.80 and matching bonus. I mean, guys, I was, I was making no money, but you would have never known. You would have never known. People like Scotty Hobbs, who I know is on here, watched me. He thought I was making $100,000 a year. And no, I never lied. I never said I was making more than I was. But damn it, I acted like I was. I acted as if I was a top freaking leader because I knew where I was going and nothing was gonna stop me. I was gonna become that top leader. But I was going to become a top leader by acting like I had in the past, like a victim and blaming people or whining about where I was currently. Because where I was currently is exactly where I was supposed to be. I was exactly where I should be. But I knew where I was going. And so I had to, if I wanted to get there, I knew I had to act differently. And I would have to put in a lot more work, a lot of investment. Because that's what you do when you want to build something great. I did this call, and I'm not going to, I'll post a slide, but... Taking ownership, like, are you treating this business like a hobby and then whining that it doesn't pay like a business? Because truthfully, I see a lot of people that are on social media that are scrolling and they're spending time, but they're not actually inviting. Like, if they were to actually fill out a sheet whether or not they're inviting or not, reality check would hit. And if you are inviting, like Miguel said yesterday, are you inviting by pasting scripts to people? Or are you actually connecting with people like a human being? with passion, excitement, like believing in what you're saying to the point where you don't give a crap what their answer is back because you know in your heart it is for their best interest that you're sharing it with them. It's not out of wanting to make a quick buck. The thing I love about this business is you can't cheat it. You can't cheat it. So many other network marketing companies, they're called front loaded. They are paying you out based on recruiting, right? When you recruit high numbers, you get quick money. If I was to be in a front-loaded network marketing company, it would look a lot like this. I sign up. I sign up two of my friends for $500. I make $250 of that $500 from my friends. My two friends just gave me $500. Yay! I made a $500 paycheck from my friends. Like, my friends just paid me $250 each, and now I made $500. Yay! Whether or not they succeed. That is what I didn't love about network marketing because I didn't want to just go and recruit people for the point of recruiting. 
I wanted to be part of something that was bigger than myself. I wanted to feel like when I talked to someone, I could actually add value to their life and what we talked and sold would be something that we believed in, something that could change someone's life. And I love the fact that in this business, if someone gets in and I don't help them succeed, I don't benefit from it. So we have a vested interest in each other. That person needs me just as much as I need them to succeed. So I can't go sign up 50 people and suddenly make a few thousand dollars. No, in Beachbody, I actually have to help those people and I have to add value to their lives. And those customers that I sign up, I'm not just giving them bull crap product for the point of having a product. It wasn't just, oh, let's see, I wanna start a network marketing company, let me go ahead and find a product that will sell and then we'll go ahead and put this together. No, Beachbody was around much longer than Team Beachbody, which is the coach network. The products sold themselves. They were on infomercials selling the crap out of P90X. What they needed is people to actually succeed with the programs because they needed to have success stories. They didn't want it to be just collecting dust on somebody's, um, on their bookshelf. They wanted people to actually succeed and they saw in their message boards that when people were actually interacting with each other that were on the same journey, there was a higher success rate with them actually sticking with the program and seeing results versus them buying it, having it at home and trying to go it alone. I know for me personally, until I had my YouTube videos up there and I had the personal accountability of people knowing I was in this, I didn't stick with it. It's too easy to quit on myself. So many people have these products and they've never stuck with it because they didn't have a coach who invested in them. So I knew that I could feel good about starting this business, building a team, because if I didn't help those people succeed, I wasn't gonna grow. But how many of you guys are like fussing over the fact that this one's harder than others. I've heard it like a bunch lately and I'm like, what? When did we think business, owning your life, having a life by design was gonna be easy? I don't know, but to me, that seems like bullshit. I'm scared to be in something where I don't have to work hard and I don't have to, I don't have to add value to people's life to benefit from it. I don't wanna be a part of that, not at all. So if you had invested $100,000 into this business rather than the $40, that most of you did, or the ones that were customers buying a challenge pack and automatically got in for free, would you be treating it the same way you are today? And I can honestly say, when I look back at the start of my business, because my back was against the wall, because I had an ultimatum hanging over my head, because I looked at my daughter and I said, I am not having your family tree be the one I grew up with. I treated it like a $100,000 a year business because I knew it was gonna become one. I have chills right now. I knew it was gonna become one. I just knew if I stuck it out and I took every day and I learned a little bit more, I didn't have to know it all right off the bat. I just learned it as I went. I made mistakes and I learned from them and they made me stronger and I grew through it. I knew that one person saying no to me wasn't gonna define my daughter's future. Hell no. I knew that I could either be embarrassed of what other people thought or I could be embarrassed of the fact that my daughter was living the life I grew up with because I decided I wasn't going to make other people dislike me. I wasn't gonna have people judging me. I would rather the world judge me than my daughter look at me and think, gosh, I wish my mom, you know, I wish we could do all the stuff that we can't do because mom never pushed herself. If you showed up to your normal business, whether you, you know, are a stay-at-home mom or whether you work, how well would you be doing if you showed up to Beachbody that way, or to your real job like that, how you show up to Beachbody? Would you be succeeding? Tell, tell yourself honestly, because I know if I would have showed up to my real job the way I showed up to Beachbody, I would have rocked my real job. I was determined. So I want you to ask yourself, like, how can you treat this differently? Why is it that we have this instant gratification thing with Beachbody or any business like this? Why is it that we will make the excuse, I can't work my Beachbody business because I'm going to night school, when what, night school gives you no guarantee of extra income for the most part, unless you have a company that's paying you for that, but we'll go to night school, we'll pay to go to learn more with the hopes that we will be paid more in our regular job. Yet you won't take the time to learn Beachbody because it's not paying you right off the bat with like literally no investment with a $15 monthly fee. It just doesn't make sense, guys. And I, I'm not saying it to be mean because I know there's so many people that struggle with this, but I'm telling you right now, there's nothing wrong with the Beachbody compensation plan. There's nothing wrong with this business model. There's everything right with it, except for it does require work, just like everything in life that's worth a shit. Marriage, pretty freaking hard. 
amazing, best part of life, when you, when you work at it and you make it right. When you don't work at it, how bad does it suck? Your kids, same thing. Any business that you run, ask in Morgan, she owns a franchise. If she didn't show up and open her store, what would happen if they were like sporadically opening up for business? What would happen to their store? It would fail, people would stop coming. But yet so many people are running their franchise, their beach body business, very sporadically, showing up when it's convenient. Like Miguel said, when you feel like it, it can't be a successful business if you don't treat it like one. So if it's a hobby for you and you're perfectly happy with it just like that, awesome. It doesn't have to be a six-figure business for everybody. It's, you know, that's not everybody's goal. If it's just that you enjoy the programs, the camaraderie, the, you know, feel of being around the people that are passionate, great. But if you guys are making excuses and saying, I'm not happy where I'm at because I'm not making this much money, then check yourself before you wreck yourself, right? So, next thing. If you were your challenger, would you want you? Are you the most active person in the group? Are you working harder than everyone else? Do you have the biggest belief? If you were your coach, if every single player on your team acted like you, would you guys get to where you want to go? Because a leader outworks every single person on their team. And there's always going to be ways that you can get stuck and you're going to have bumps in the road. But if you allow those bumps to become boulders rather than stepping stones, it doesn't serve you. It doesn't serve your dream. So you have to continue to push forward. I want to do a little thing that I actually learned during my personal development today. And that was, I want all of you guys to look around the room, wherever you're at right now. I want you to look around the room <clears throat> and I want you to find all the brown. Look for all the brown that you see around the room. Everywhere around the room, take in as much as you possibly can. Find the brown, find the brown. Okay, take it in, find the brown. Look for the brown. Okay, now I want everybody to close your eyes. Seriously, close your eyes, right? Close your eyes and I want you to recall and say out loud everything that was brown that you saw. Keep your eyes closed. Everything that was brown, recall all those things that you saw. Now, with your eyes closed, I want you to think of anything that you saw that was red. Did you see any red? Most likely, it's very difficult for you to recall what red you saw because you weren't focused on it. But now, I want you to go look around the room, find the red, find red, find red, find red, look around the room, find red. And you'll find it, right? But a lot of times, we see things that aren't even a truly there when we're looking for them, when we're focused on them. I know for me, when I, when I did this activity earlier, the red I saw was also orange. The red I saw was also burgundy. The red I saw was also pink. Because when you're focused on something, you'll find it even when it's not there. So some of you guys are so focused on the fact that this is hard and that you don't have much time and you know you have all these excuses running your, through your head and you're wondering why you keep finding ways to make excuses is because you're, you're focused on. What you focus on, you see. Seek and you shall find. But if you change your mindset to focus on the things that are benefiting you, the things that are going to make you stronger, the things that are going to grow you, then you'll start to attract and see those things. I know for me, when I went and got a car, I saw that car everywhere. Before that, I never saw the car. Think about that. It works the same exact way. If you start to focus on your business and the belief that you have that it's going to work, that amazing people are attracted to you because you're constantly working on yourself, you're becoming a better, stronger, more inspiring version of yourself every single day. And just like how I was that fourth time when I approached P90X, when I had failed all those other times, the time that I drew a line in the sand, I just said every single day, I'm going to stop comparing myself to everybody else. I'm just going to focus on beating my own personal best. If every single day you start to do that, I promise you, success is a guarantee. If you start to speak over yourself and your business and your life and your future the way that I spoke in that message to Craig Holiday, I promise you, success is only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. It didn't happen for me overnight. I didn't make $600 in six months. No, it took me a long time, but my husband saw the actions I was putting in and his belief became stronger because of the action that I took. So if your spouse doesn't believe in you or other people in your life don't believe in you, prove it to them. He, didn't, he shouldn't have believed in me. I had never had a track record of, record of success. I needed to prove it to him. I needed to prove it to myself. I needed to prove it to everybody else out there. So many people had seen me start and quit and start and quit and start and quit. 
Why would I be mad at them for believing that this would be the exact same way? I had to prove it. So some of you guys have to stop whining about the pe fact that people don't believe, it, believe in you or are saying mean things or whatever. Get over it and show them. It is the best feeling in the entire freaking world to prove people wrong, to, pr to show them that, no, this time it is different. And I knew in my head it was different, but I had to show other people. And so what? That makes it even more awesome. So this is a how-to video a how to break past all the crap that you've let yourself hold back. I don't care what your past says about you. I don't care what your family tree looks like. It can become the amazing vision that you have. I know for me, the people in this picture, this is my brother, his family, now going to be a family of four, and now me and my family, now a family of four. Our family tree is forever changed. No longer in future generations Will they have this tree? This tree does not exist anymore. It's this one. And it has amazing things associated with it. Belief, faith, hard work, love, overcomer, dedication, growth, courage, triumph, vision, victory. What is your hand-me-down going to be? Because I was hand down shit, but I don't care. Now, guess what? My story is that much better because I used all the stuff that I had hand, been handed down and I shared it with other people and I said, you know what, if you see yourself in my story, anything is possible. Watch me. I will show you and I will guide you and I will take you down the road because I am not turning back. So don't you dare turn back. There's too much ahead. There's too many blessings to be given. And I don't want to see one single person not live up to their fullest potential. That is my calling. That's the thing that I am made to do. And guess what? So are you. Your story is there because it's supposed to be inspiring to other people and you're going to see that in a lot of the stories that are shared this week. So I hope that you'll tune in. I hope that you will watch every single video because it's there to prove to you that these people are no different than you. They started at ground zero too and it was hard and it was worth it. All right, guys. Love you. We'll see you tomorrow.